The previous unit focuses primarily on sampling and experiments and forming statistical questions and using methodologies to answer those questions. This unit focuses on sampling distributions and their characteristics and making conclusions about the population from a smaller set of data. The first lesson in this unit is on standard deviation, and it should be taught if students do not have a firm grasp on the concept of standard deviation. There are actually three days allotted, if you look at the big picture, for this, and this understanding is imperative to complete the remaining lessons in the unit. So if they have a firm grasp and know the definition, then you might be able to start on lesson two, which is normal distribution and empirical rule. So for the scope and sequence, the, the purpose of this lesson really is to have students get a foundation for standard deviation. So I'm gonna work through number one on this standard deviation lesson, and it's gonna actually show you how to calculate the standard deviation by hand and really break each of the parts of the formula down. So problem, the, the lesson starts by giving the formula um, before moving into number one. So this says to summarize the variability in a data set, a value called the standard deviation can be used. The standard deviation is the typical variation that a data value varies from the mean of the distribution of data. So another way to phrase that would be to say that it's the average distance that all of the data values together vary from the mean. So that's why it's really like an average. So it says the standard deviation of a distribution is represented by the Greek letter sigma, it's the lower case, and the formula is given here in the first paragraph. So it says that sigma is equal to the square root of the sum of x sub i minus mu squared divided by n. So n is going to be the total number of data values, and the, the numerator the x sub i minus mu squared is really what I would call the sum of the squared deviations. So if you had five data values, then you would have a calculation that was x1 minus mu, and then you would square, and x2 minus mu and square, and all the way up to x5 minus mu and square. So when we look at question one, it says that we're going to be looking at the shoe lengths and centimeters of 10 third grade girls and they're shown in the table. So it says to compute the standard deviation, we first have to determine the mean. So this letter or this notation right here, mu, would be the mean. So to find the mean of all of these shoe lengths, we're gonna add the shoe lengths and we're gonna divide by 10 because there are 10 of them and we're gonna get 21.7 centimeters. So that's already been done. And the derivation of the standard deviation is really going to be best seen if you break it down into several columns. So if you're doing some other examples, I would recommend setting up the tables like this. So we have the data values in column one, and then column two is going to be the deviation that the data values are from the mean. So when we look at Sarah, her data value or shoe length was 22. And if we subtract the mean, we get 0.3. So by this being a positive number, it means that she actually is above the mean. So let me go back to my pen. Okay, so the positive 0.3 means her data value is higher than the mean. And for Carmen, her data value also is higher than the mean. And then for Tina, 21 minus 21.7 is a negative number, so Tina is below the mean. So when we look at the remaining questions for Micaiah, excuse me, the girls, we have 24 minus 21.7, and that's going to end up giving us a deviation of 2.3. So Micaiah is above the mean. And if I complete the first column, then I'm going to end up getting 0.3 for Kai, negative 0.7 for Michelle, negative 2.7 for Caroline, 1.3 for Gabby, 0.3 for Shannon, and negative 1.7 for Heather. So encourage your students to complete the first column. And then even though this is actually already added for you at the bottom, I would have them check that. So it seems really confusing that if we're finding an average that the sum of all of the deviations are zero. And so that we have to get around that somehow. So what I wanna do is look at how this data is organized. And this is actually a scatter plot of all of the girls. So I have the 10 girls in each of their data values. 
So for example, we have Sarah and her data value is 22. And so we calculated that her deviation was here and that was 0.3. So that means she's above the mean. So the mean is actually the line in red, 21.7. So you can see that some data values are above and some are below. So if we go to the third girl, which is Carmen, excuse me, Tina, uh, this vertical distance right here is 0.7, but because it's below the mean, it would be negative. So the idea in summing the deviations is that some of the data values are above the mean and then some are below. But when you add all of those deviations together, you get zero because that's what creates the actual average. So if we go back to the lesson, we're gonna look at the third column. And so this would be the sum, uh, or excuse me, this would be the squared deviation from the mean. So I need to take all of the deviations and square them. So the first one, the you know, first three are done. So 0.3 squared is 0.09, 1.3 squared is 1.69 and so on. So if I look at Micaiah, I can take 2.3 squared, which is her deviation from the mean squared and get 5.29. So if I continue squaring all of the values in the second column, I'm gonna get all the square deviations for each girl. And then finishing with Heather, she has a square deviation of 2.89. Now, when I sum this column, I will not get zero. I actually will get the number 20.1. And then in part B, the lesson is actually going to ask us to use this 20.1 sum and plug it in to get the standard deviation for the population. So it says on B, finally to, com finally, to compute the standard deviation, determine the average squared deviation by dividing by N, then determine the positive square root. So if we take our 20.1, that is our sum of the squared deviations, I had 10 girls, so 10 data values, and then I'm gonna take the square root. So that calculation rounded to three decimals is 1.418 centimeters. Now, there is another standard deviation calculation called the sample standard deviation. And some of you guys may be aware that it's a similar, well, it's actually the same formula, but the denominator is the only thing that's different. So we would take the square deviations, add those up, but divide by n minus one. But for this lesson, we're gonna be using the population standard deviation rather than the sample standard deviation. Now, if I fill in the blank for the rest of B, it says this implies that the typical amount that a third grade girl's shoe length deviates from the mean shoe length is about 1.418 centimeters. Now, if I move on to the next page, it's going to ask us just a few more questions about the distribution. So on C, it says this dot plot displays the 10 shoe lengths from the table and has vertical lines at the mean and at the values that are one standard deviation above and below the mean. So what we can do is actually calculate what these numbers are. So if I take the mean of 21.7 and I subtract one standard deviation, I will get a number below the mean which is 20.282. And so I can write this here for the net minus one standard deviation. If I find the positive one standard deviation, I'm gonna add the standard deviation, so I'll be above the mean, and that's gonna give me the value 23.118. So I'm gonna label that. And of course we have the mean here is 21.7. So in this distribution, blank girls' shoe lengths are within one standard deviation of the mean. So we need to actually give a number there, so we're gonna count. So values or data values between 20.282 and 23.118, looks like we have all of these dots and there are seven of those. This means that 70% are within one standard deviation of the mean shoe length. So if I take seven out of the 10 girls, that's where we're getting the 70%. On part D, it says that the deviation for Caroline's shoe length is negative 2.7 centimeters. So we calculated that on page one, and that just really means that in context that her shoe length is shorter than average.
On part E, it says Carmen's shoe length is less than one standard deviation above the mean. So we know that it's going to be a positive deviation. Exactly how many standard deviations above the mean is her shoe length? So the hint here says since standard deviation measures distance from the mean, divide the deviation by the standard deviation. So when we look back on page one at Carmen and recalculate, it looks like her shoe size is 23. I subtract the mean of 21.7, and then we divide by our population standard deviation. So when we calculate that, we're gonna get the number 0.917. So if we wanted to interpret in context, we would say that Carmen's shoe length is 0.917 standard deviations above the mean. This may sound like a familiar calculation, and this calculation is actually a z-score calculation. We're not required to teach z-score calculations in the scope of the course of study, but if you're familiar with the z-score, it is by definition, the number of standard deviations a data value is above the mean.